My name's Dave Johnson, and um, I served three tours of duty in the Vietnam War between 1965 and 1972. And um, like all other infantrymen in all other wars, I faced life-threatening experiences. The first time I was sent to Vietnam was in 1965, and Judy and I had been married about six months when I took off. During that first tour, I was with a rifle company, and one day, moving through a jungle area in central Vietnam, through an uh, overgrown path, I was ahead of three or four guys moving through that trail slowly, when one of them suddenly said, stop, lieutenant, stop. And I, of course, abruptly stopped and looked down in front of me, and right at, at, at my, uh, across my shins was a tripwire for a uh, booby trap of connected to a grenade. And if I had tripped that, the grenade would have gone off and probably have killed me and the guy behind me. So I, I felt very lucky then, and of course I was very thankful for how alert that young man was. Uh, my second tour in Vietnam in 1968, I went back as a rifle company commander. And uh, on the 29th of December that year, I was leading a group to join up with another patrol that had had a bad action the night before. I was in a hurry, I crossed a canal, and I stepped on a booby trap, or what you would call landmine, or IED in today's language. It was a small piece of explosive, probably, that uh, when it detonated, it threw me, knocked me down, and um, found out later that I had broken bones in my foot and ankle, and had injuries to my arm. But attached to that booby trap device were three hand grenades, and they were just kind of blown to the side. Uh, they didn't detonate, although they were intended, of course, to explode. Even if one of those uh, grenades had gone off, um, we, I wouldn't be sitting here with Judy today <laughs> telling you this story. So I was evacuated through Japan and uh, back home to Judy and the kids. Yeah, shortly after Christmas, I got a, a phone call from Dave, that second tour, and uh, he just he said he was in Japan, and I don't think I even bothered to ask him what was wrong. I just said, "Oh, thank God you're you're coming home." And I was the second time I was I was more worried than the first. The first time the whole unit went, and I was pretty excited that we were a part of something that was saving the world. As in my naivety, I thought at the time. So second time I was pretty worried, and I had a little six weeks old daughter when he left. So we had a a lot more to think about then, and uh, that that's about where we were. I'm, I'm not sure that I was, I, I said thank God, I'm, I'm not sure that my faith was really strong at the time. I think maybe at the time I thought it was luck too. Yeah, on my third tour in Vietnam, I was an advisor with the Vietnamese Infantry Regiment, and on the 5th of July, 1972, I was on a reconnaissance flight up over a section of Cambodia when our helicopter with four crew members, myself and another soldier, uh, were shot down. We crash landed in Cambodia and came under fire immediately. Uh, within a few minutes, though, a uh, Chinook helicopter pilot responded to our mayday and came in to rescue us. Uh, my thoughts then on the ground were, uh, I'm either going to get killed or captured here today. and. Um, and when the rescue came, it was a great relief to see this rescue helicopter come in. Now, the, th the third time he went, I was sure he was going to die. I figured the first time, I didn't know about the, the almost stepping on the landmine the first time, but the first time I thought, okay, he came home, he's fine. The second time he was wounded, when he got on the plane the third time, I, I just said to myself, they're going to kill him. That's what they're going to do. And by that time, we had two children. We yeah. had a two-year-old and a four-year-old. and We had thought we were free of Vietnam, but no, not so much. And so I was, yeah. I was positive he wasn't going to come home. Well, years, several years later, I, I made contact with uh, one of the crew members of the rescue helicopter came in. And he told me as their helicopter approached the area where we were shot down, the, the fire, of course, that was being directed at us now is directed at the hel rescue helicopter, which is a big target. And he said as he came in and saw the tracer rounds flying around, he thought to himself, today is the day I'm going to die. We're not going to come out of this alive. And yet the helicopter came in, it swooped around, we raced in the back end of it while rounds were slapping against the side of the helicopter. And, um, and we were lifted off even though the helicopter was damaged. This same crew member also told me 
that as we were being lifted off, he felt as if the hands of God were around that helicopter bringing us to safety. Uh, after these events, uh, I felt lucky. I felt fortunate, of course. But over the years, I, at that time, I had a, a belief in God. I believed in God, but my faith wasn't real strong. I didn't have a good, strong relation, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, but over the years, I began to recognize and acknowledge that it wasn't just luck, it wasn't just happenstance that I was saved on those three times. I really believe it was by the grace of God that I was saved. And I know it was by the grace of God because, I, <coughs> you know, that, that third time I didn't hear about it for probably a year after he got home or maybe even longer before he told me what had happened over there. Uh, but I, my faith wasn't that strong then either. But I truly believe that Dave was saved for a very strong reason. I've seen the impact he's had on me and my relationship with God. I've seen the impact he has on our children, on our grandchildren, and I've seen the impact that his life has met to a lot of other people we've met along the way. So I know why he was saved. At the time these incidents happened, and for several years after, I had never read or even thought about the Psalm 91. But uh, a lot of people call this a soldier's psalm, and for good reason. I just want to tell you a couple, read a couple verses from this. First of all, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. My refuge, my fortress. He will deliver you from the snare of the trapper, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is like a shield and a bulwark. You will not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day or pestilence that stalks in darkness. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. Even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil will befall you. No plague will come near your tent. And he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all ways, and they will bear you up with their hands that you do not strike your foot against a stone. Uh, that's uh, so meaningful to me. I've read this on hundreds of times, and I've given this book to people, particularly guys who are going to be deployed. Now, I don't know why God spared my life. Uh, I, I do know that it was by his grace that I was saved. Something I didn't earn, something I didn't deserve. Although I don't know why he saved me, I, do. I know what he gave me. He gave me time. He gave me the rest of my life. And I could enjoy being a husband and a father. I could go to church more regularly, pray on a more regular basis be in Bible studies, and be influenced by pastors like Harold Hendren and good Christian friends, many of whom are in this congregation. And for that, I'm eternally grateful, and I praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you.